Welcome back to the Morning Brew here on CNC3. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic has shifted the world into overdrive, bringing some countries to their knees as they try to save their citizens from this invisible enemy. There are currently over 15 million cases worldwide, 8 million recoveries, and over 600,000 deaths. Well, right here at home, we have 141 samples of which have tested positive thus far. With the Minister of Health reporting, local transmission cases in the mix. Well, the Minister of Health says it's not time to panic, but we should be concerned. How concerned? Well, we ask a virologist, Dr. Christopher Ura, who joins us now from the UK. Good morning, Dr. Ura. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Well, Dr. Ura, let's jump straight into the discussion. We're hearing that there are now local transmission in the mix here in Toronto Tobago. How concerned should we be about that as the Ministry of Health is uh, continuing to trace, do some contact tracing? Yeah, well, we, we should be concerned. Um, um, and as the minister said, we shouldn't panic, but we should be concerned because um, we've been very fortunate in Trinidad and Tobago um, for the last few weeks or many weeks now because we, we, we haven't had any uh, spread of the virus. Um, so unlike many other countries in the world, uh, we've been in a very fortunate situation. But of course, we've been extremely worried all the time because it's the, the, the cases are increasing all around the world as we speak um, and so we have a risk and so it was inevitable at some stage that we were going to get the virus coming in uh, to Trinidad it would have been extremely surprising if it didn't happen so uh, the good news is uh, we're in a much much better situation now um, because we understand the virus we understand how it's transmitted we understand how control uh, how to control it we ha we have things in place like testing so we can immediately put these in place and jump on it um, and 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 and, and uh, make sure that we snuff out the virus as soon as possible. This is something we're going to have to live with probably going forward. That the virus is going to come into the country, um, but we need to make sure uh, that we get on top of it as soon as we possibly can um, and, and and get our free status again. No, there's still some confusion uh, between local transmission and community spread with. Some assuming that if you can't identify the source of the virus, then that will mean that it is, in fact, community spread. If you can just share some light. Yes, I mean, there's a bit of crossover here. I mean, what's going on at the moment is that uh, the Ministry of Epidemiologists and the Ministry of Health will be working really hard to try to track and to trace and to try to find the origin uh, of this virus. Because, indeed, if we don't find an origin, if we find other people have been uh, infected along the way, so we've tracked and traced and we found that other people have been infected and we, and we, and we go sort of down and down and down and we can't find an origin, then, then you can say that we have community community spread. Um, but if we can find a, 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 a source, which is not too far away from the cases that we have at the moment, then it's more local spread um, and you can snuff it out much easier. So this is what why the next few days, uh, the next uh, few days are really, really important. And I think uh, when I've heard the Minister of Health speak, I mean, we need the, the country to support this as well, because it's critical uh, that during this time when we don't really know um, whether it's local or community spread, how extensive the spread is. So we, as, as, as people of Trinidad and Tobago, we need to take all the precautions um, that we've been told so many times about staying at home if we're sick, um, uh, keeping that distance, uh, washing our hands, all those things, because we don't really know at the moment. Uh, but hopefully, um, when the tracking, the testing, tracking and tracing is done, um, this sort of um, uh, work will, will reveal that it's not too much uh, in the way of community spread. It's more of a local spread um, and we'll be able to snuff it out as has been done in many countries around the world, like in China and other countries. Um, so we need to do that. And we're in a place to do it now, and that's what we're doing at the moment. But we need people to support this. No, there were concerns that the virus was airborne. And with the latest uh, local transmission cases, we saw that the persons who came into contact with these patients would, would have tested negative for the virus. Is that possible or should we expect that symptoms may develop sooner or later? Well, um, of course, th th we've heard some evidence that there might be 
some level of airborne spread. But the majority of spread in this virus, of uh, uh, the way this virus is transmitted, is still through these droplets, still through these this close contact. Um, uh, so as long as people um, are, you know, are wearing their mask when they're outside, are keeping their distance, um, and are doing the things that we've been told to do, uh, there's a good chance that even if people get the virus, they may not spread it. Um, so it's not absolutely done and dusted that these people, um, people who've been in contact with other people, are going to spread the virus, um, because um, uh, it's not all suddenly going to go out in the air and lots of lots of people are going to get it the airborne spread is is, is 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 there's more evidence for it but we need to remember that it's still mostly droplet spread close contact um and the virus uh, getting onto surfaces so disinfecting the surfaces and washing hands that's the majority of the way it's infected but of course masks also help a lot in that way because they help uh, reducing um uh, the, the the spread of droplets so i wouldn't get too worried about the airborne spread at the moment it's not it's not it's not the major form of, of spread what comes after a local transmission case do we expect it to spread like wildfire uh, no i mean uh no, no. I mean, it all, of course, depends on who that person has been in contact with. It, it depends on um, how infectious that person has been. We know um, that there are asymptomatic, some people who are asymptomatically infected, they're showing no symptoms. They can transmit the virus, but they don't transmit it as efficiently as people who are coughing and sneezing and showing the symptoms. Um, so it's not absolutely sure that now we've got a couple of cases in the country that it's going to spread like wildfire that's not that's not the way this 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 virus spreads and we're we're in a much much better situation because we know what to do to stop this virus spreading and if we all conform um to these recommendations that are out not just in trinidad but all around the world we can reduce the, tr the transmission sig significantly there are lots of people in the uk for example who have the virus we have um like 500 to a thousand people being tested a day um uh, and, and the virus levels are still uh, reducing or have been reducing because people are now can know what to do to reduce the spread. So I, I don't think your, your, your listening public should think that just because we have it in the country, it's going to rapidly spread and out of control. We can get rid of it again, but we need everybody's support for that. No, there were some concerns about the testing for the COVID-19 virus. We've seen instances where someone would have received a positive one day and then not too long after they will receive a negative test and then a positive test again mm -hmm. what is uh in from your research and so forth what is a reason for that and is this something we should yeah. continue to be concerned about because i mean we have so many nationals who are, are returning home now and we there is a concern that even 14 days after being quarantined they may very well develop symptoms Yes, I mean this is a, a this is a difficult one for people to to, to get to grips with because what we're de dealing with, what we the test we're using is a is a test called the PCR and that actually detects the genetic material, so what we call the RNA, so not the infectious virus. And what happens when people get infected with the virus um, is it goes down into their lungs and their upper respiratory tract and things. The, and the virus, after a while, when they stop symptoms, the virus dies but the genetic material is left. And when people are coughing up, you know, as you do after the virus has been, they're not coughing up live virus, they're coughing up the genetic material, which still causes the PCR to be positive. So what you sometimes find when you're at the edge of detection, when people have, 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 have recovered from symptoms afterwards, is that, that this genetic material, but not a live virus, seems to be causing the PCR to be positive, weakly positive. And then maybe the next day there's no genetic material and then the next day after that there might be a little bit there because it's at the edge of detection so this is very unlikely to be an infectious form of the virus so those people are very unlikely to be able to transmit the virus um, however it confuses a little bit the, the, this PCR test um, um, uh, what you need to do to be absolutely sure is isolate the virus and check that you've got infectious virus there and researchers and scientists have done that throughout the infection 
infection and they found at these later stages when they're seeing low levels you know these low levels of pcr positive they're finding no infectious virus um so i think um sometimes this is going to happen this is just the nature of the testing but we we don't need to worry too much about the way after infection people turning up with a very weak positive it's probably very very likely they're not going to be infectious what about those persons who would have recovered from the virus what are their chances of uh, getting it back um, very, very low. We're not 100% sure at the moment um, because all, these need very detailed controlled studies to be able to understand exactly how um, protected people are once they've been infected. But we know that the vast majority of people, once they've been infected, have good antibody levels, good T cell levels, um, and there's no evidence that people who have been infected with the virus then get the virus again and get another bout of disease. Um, it's, it's extremely unlikely from what we see so far from the science. There's a good immune response generated and people, once they've got the virus, are likely to be protected at least for a reasonable period of time. We don't know exactly how long that will be because we've only known this virus for, for five, six months now. You have to follow people through six months, a year, you know, to know how long they're protected for. We will know that, but this is a new virus. But I think people will will be protected definitely people will be protected they won't get the virus again at least for hopefully um, at least a year I would hope if not longer no the Minister of Health has said that they have no plans at this point in time rolling back some of our COVID-19 uh, restrictions which have been relaxed over the past couple of weeks should we solely depend on uh, citizens to do their part or do you expect our policies to change going forward? It, this will all depend on what we find from the tracking and the tracing from these cases. And you talked about local spread and community spread, how extensive the spread has been. Um, you, at the moment, I agree with what the ministry are doing. Let's, 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 let's keep everybody on their toes, keep everybody alert. However, let's let's do what they'll be doing is tracking and tracing and seeing where the virus is, is seeing how extensive the spread is and then make a decision at that stage there is a chance that we will have to go back um, it, countries are going back into lockdown cities are going into back into lockdown this might happen but you don't want to rush into this because of course you know these are extremely expensive decisions they have a big effect on a lot of people's livelihoods so let's see what happens over the next um, uh, few days um, and see what what they find and then I'm sure the ministry will make the right decision according to that um, but as I said during this period, it's very, very important that, 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 that the population of Trinidad um, take all the measures that they've been uh, recommended to take. Dr. Ura, how do we know when we're entering uh, a second wave of the virus? Well, a lot of the countries are going through this now, and basically this is what's testing so important. You know, the Ministry of the, the, the World Health Organization is testing, 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 because we have these asymptomatic cases, we have these pre-symptomatic cases, we have, um, so, so what we need to do is keep on testing, and then we will know as people, as we get a rise in people becoming positive in the testing, we get a rise in people at the same time going into hospitals because there's a a significant percentage of people who get sick very sick from this once we see that happening but it starts off with increased positives in the test and then it goes to people going into hospital and then it goes to death so there's a lag between it the first thing we see is positive tests and then we know we're going into a second wave if we don't take the precautions that are needed and do all the tracking and tracing you just China went into a second wave in Beijing um, and Beijing is a massive populous city um, and you know it's very difficult to control people going in and out however they they, they snuffed out that second wave that 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 that's that um, uh, outbreak uh, and there's now very few people infected from it through all the measures that we know about quarantine um, isolating all that so once we see the start just the start of that 
that that that curve rising we need to snuff it down and then get rid of the virus again in trinidad because i think that the trinidad is in a very unique trinidad and tobago is in a very un, unique situation we can actually we should try to maintain no virus um, we don't want to work with a limited amount of virus. Like in the UK, we're stuck with the virus, I think. I don't think we're going to get rid of it. We just have to, to dampen it. In Trinidad, we need to get rid of it. And then every time it comes in, which it will, snuff it out. That's the best way to go. How difficult uh, do you see contact tracing in TNT? <laughs> well, it's much easier in Trinidad and Tobago than it would be in a bigger country. Um, I mean, we've got thousands of people in, in UK who are being traced and then you're looking at the thousands of people that they've been in contact with not only yesterday but you need to look in uh, take into consideration the incubation period so you're looking at uh, how who they've been infected uh, who they've been um, in contact with for maybe a week at least or even longer um, so you you recognize that you the smaller amount of people you're tracing from uh, the easier it is and as those people infected people increase the more difficult it is and it's a very very you know difficult chart uh, difficult thing to do in a large country because you've got webs of people and some people have been asymptomatic they have been uh, um, um, uh, they haven't had they've been pre-symptomatic so they've been acting normally you know they've been going to the supermarkets they've been um, they've been uh, seeing friends um, uh, you know so you have to trace and track all those people and you have to make sure those people isolate before they're tested you may keep an eye on them you have to keep an eye on them for 15 14 days as well because that's the potential incubation period so you can see how that web can get very complicated and it's best to keep it small at the moment we only have two intra in that hopefully that will, will, will remain the case um, uh, it's best to keep it as small as possible because, because it can get out of control now we have uh, citizens coming back into the country do you think that this is the right move at this point in time especially should we do as you say which is to get the virus out and then continue bringing people back home well i think the way it's been done in trinidad uh, bringing back people has been it's been done very in a, in a, in a, in a, in a very calm way in the fact that and in a very effective way in the fact that people coming in legally um, they have been they have been quarantined you know they have they have been isolated and quarantined so once you do that the virus won't get out as very very unlikely the virus is going to is, is going to get out the problem is is once you let people in um and you're letting them make their own decisions about quarantine in other words you say go and, and quarantine at home uh, for 14 days um please you don't know whether they're going to do it <laughs> but at the moment this is being enforced um in trinidad so i don't see a problem with continuing that um as we have this little cluster because i think this is kind of what we're going to get have to get used to going forward we've got this virus with us for quite a while we're not just going to keep it out all the time and i don't think this um, i mean we don't know how this virus got in you know i think there's lots of places it could come in especially you know our borders are not as in south america and in venezuela this virus is circulating very very strong so that's a really really um big risk so i think it's okay what they're doing as long as they keep a measured approach um uh, uh, and, and and keep people quarantined um and monitored very carefully i think they can you should carry on bringing people in Dr. Uru, with everything you know about the virus right now, I would, as we end the interview, I would like you to remind our citizens of their important role in all of this. Yes, I mean, we have to remember this is a, a, this is a nasty virus um, and it, it affects uh, it affects certain groups of people very badly elderly people people with um, underlying health conditions including many of the underlying health conditions that we have in, in Trinidad and in the Caribbean like diabetes so don't do take this virus uh, seriously and we're all in it together you know we're all we've well we're, 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 we've all got to do our bit if we don't all do our bit will allow it in. Um, so follow the instructions of the Ministry of Health. Be alert, be aware, um, uh, be safe. The most important thing is 
if you have clinical signs that are consistent with this kind of thing, respiratory signs, stay at home and get tested. Those are the most important. That's one of the most important roles of the lock because that's how it's going to be transmitted. Stay at home, phone the hotline, get tested. And at the same time, people who you had contact with in your family, ask them to stay at home as well until you've got your test result back. I think that's really important. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Ura, for joining us here on The Morning Brew. We really do appreciate your input this morning. No problem. All right, well, it's time for a commercial break. We'll be right back.